My name is Taylor Freeman, and this is my vlog for my midterm for Black Feminist and Feminist Thought. Um, if it seems like I'm looking off to the side, I have some notes over here so I won't lose my points in talking because I can ramble on sometimes. Um, and excuse my video quality, this is the best that my laptop can do right now. But, um, okay, starting off with the met methodology, um, my own methodology dealing with research on feminism is simply just taking the information that I collect from my surroundings and um, I use in my everyday life and I dig deeper in um, those subjects by using like social media and um, mostly social media because everything is dealing with social media now. Um, the two readings I chose for the class that resonated with me the most was Coming Apart by Alice Walker and Alanda Alanda Clay's Confessions of an Ex-Theological Bitch. Um, both readings have something to deal with sexuality and the degradation of black women. And me personally, I believe in sexual liberation for all women. Um, I said that in the beginning of the class when we were doing our introductions. I said that femi feminism to me was sexual liberation. Um, to me, that is when women have the freedom to explore their sexual interests and sexuality without backlash from men or society as a whole. Even though there's been more talk about sexual liberation in society now that women are more open about it, um, I still think that society sees it as taboo and that instead of being sexual liberated, women should practice innocence so that we can have a good man and that we can get married and that a man would want to choose us to have a family. Um, simply just being this perfect woman for the satisfaction of a man, not even for ourselves. Um, I see it as a problem that even now in 2016, women that practice sexual liberation are seen as whores or hoes, whereas men can be as open sexually as they want and there's no problem with it. For example, Amber Rose, she has her own talk show where she talks about feminism and sexual freedom and her show has already gotten negative views. She's gotten a lot of backlash about it on social media versus where there's TV programs on platforms such as Comedy Central and Spike TV that men create that even when talking about women in a negative way is seen as comedy or entertainment. So I'm going to go on and talk about um, Coming Apart by Alice Walker. Um, the main topic of Coming Apart was a black married couple and with this black married couple the husband comes home and every day he goes into the bathroom to do his business and he while he does it, he reads white pornography magazines while his wife cooks for him. And um, when he views these white women in these pornographic magazines, he sees himself as being closer to white men, as in having that same power that white men have. Because seeing that white men are viewing the white women in a negative light or in a controlling light, they have that power over white women so he feels that when he also watches these videos of these white women in this negative and controlling way he also has that same power so the wife ends up finding the magazines and confronts him about them and in a patriarchal patriarchal manner he says to her you know don't worry about anything that I'm doing um, don't worry about these women whatever so the next day I guess he takes into mind he brings home a black pornographic magazine but this one is different because in the white pornographic magazine the white women are seen as more human their faces are shown they're dressed up they look more prettier versus in the black pornographic magazine the black women's faces aren't shown it's just mostly their bodies and their bodies are at the feet of men as if they're just being objectified more than the white women. Also in this reading there's a comparison of being a womanist and being a feminist which was also brought up and from my understanding I think I relate more to being a womanist because it digs deeper into the issues that black women face instead of the smaller issues that white feminists take on that don't always include women of color. Um, the most interesting part of the reading was when the wife was reading the husband some research she found and Seeing that he was surprised to hear about black women being lynched and that he thought that the reason he was possibly turned on by the sight of black women being chained up and abused in porn was because he never really could imagine them being lynched. It was very interesting to me and it was very odd um, for a black man to not really think of a black woman being lynched when we were being lynched just like them um, back in time and to see that he was excited 
by that is kind of weird. It's also interesting to me that in pornography in itself, and this was discussed in class, that black women are paid less than white women when black women do the same scenes as white women pornography, and that white women are seen as more innocent and human than black women, although the porn itself is serving the same process, like ser serving the same purpose across the board to somewhat humiliate women. Um, coming from a sexual liberation standpoint, I have nothing against women doing porn as long as they're comfortable and aren't being abused, which can also be quite controversial in the porn industry because that's mainly what it is all about. Seems to me that women are more comfortable in porn when they're doing woman on woman scenes, but the woman on woman scenes aren't really as popular as maybe a white man degrading a black woman or a black man degrading a black woman in the pornographic scenes. Um, it seems like when we enjoy each other, it isn't accepted, but when we are degraded against, it's a form of entertainment. Um, for the husband in the reading to feel like he has more power if he was with a white woman is upsetting to me. It makes me think about how black men view black women as a whole. Sometimes it seems like they are embarrassed of what we do or how we are, even when we stand by them countless times. It's been noted in history how long we have stood by them, even with the Black Lives Matter movement we have stood by these black men being killed and even when not that much attention is being brought to black women when we are killed and i saw a comment on social media one time about black men being killed that a black man said he said you hoes need to stop worrying about being instagram famous and stand by your black men as we are being killed like even with them being attacked they still find room to attack us when we're not attacking them and we're standing by them by default without even being told but it's like when we come out with rape charges and allegations of maybe being sexually assaulted we're seen as liars or wanting attention um for example just recently in the media um kim kardashian west was tied up and held at gunpoint in her um hotel in paris her two sisters were out um, partying. Their security guard was standing outside of the hotel building, but not outside of the hotel room. And she was really just left alone and she was robbed at gunpoint. And when the report came out, many people on social media tried to say that it was just another publicity stunt that the Kardashians were doing. And it's just, it's just weird to me how society sees it or these people on social media see it as like an act of violence against women is rare or not the truth when reported. It's like when, it's like we're being objectified as being inv invincible. Like we're asking for it when things like this happen. So that was just my take on that reading. Um, the next one with Alonda Clay's Confessions of an Ex-Theological Bitch. It really opened my eyes up to the term backbone because I used to see backbone as being something positive. Like if I'm in a relationship, I'm my man's backbone as in seeing I'm always there for him I'm always going to be there for him to support him in everything he does but Alonda Clay defines it as uh, women being pushed to the background and having to carry the weight of others seeing, being, seeing it being seen in a more negative light um, especially like in church settings when black women are only supposed to be like assistants or cooks in the kitchen or donating money we're never really supposed to be seen on the forefront in the church for voicing our opinions we're just the backbone of the church um the part that stuck out to me the most was how respectable women are seen as more believable when they come out with allegations of harm and mistreatment versus women that are seen as not being respectable like for for example um corinne stephens also known as superhead was used as an example in the reading and the athletes that were called nappy-headed hoes on national television and it's like people stood more by the athletes being called nappy headed hoes than they did when Corinne Stephens came out about how she slept with these big name men in the industry. They tried to say she was lying and they just try to deny everything she did. And um, it frustrates me because it seems that like this women will never be able to make confessions or tell, tell their truth without being scrutinized. And to me, this correlates with the current situation with Nate Parker, the actor of The Birth of a Nation. And the rape charge he faced back in his college days where the charges were eventually dropped and the victim who faced so many issues mentally ended up committing suicide. And Nate Parker was seen as valuable and respectable back in his college days because he was a student athlete. I know that in most cases, male student athletes in college are seen as doing no wrong. And if a woman comes out about them either assaulting or raping her, the case is either ignored or dropped. And that has happened over time, so many times of women coming out about these athletes assaulting them at parties or raping them at parties. And because 
the athletes are seen as the prize of the school or bring in the most money to the school the cases are dropped or ignored um, from a feminist standpoint it does not matter to me um, that she consented with him at an earlier time so they try to say because he consent because she consented with him with sex at an earlier time that it can't be true that she was raped by him because she once wanted it like I said from a feminist standpoint it does not matter to me that she consented with him in an earlier time what matters is that at the time of the situation she did not want to have sex with him and she was still forced to which is definitely rape and in recent interviews to me it just seems like Nate Parker was very dismissive um, of the situation and in one of the movie scenes it said that he's seen as a hero to a rape victim saving a rape victim which is very weird to me seeing with all that he faced and I also see a problem with Gabrielle Union being so involved in the project seeing that she's a victim of sexual assault herself and has yet to, yet to speak up about an issue but I don't know if she's waiting to speak up about it after the movie comes out or if she will ever speak about it but I would love to hear her um, take on it to me this just goes back to black women constantly being silenced in the media and in everyday life even getting back to the reading where it seems like black women are silenced in church like I said before um, on the contrary though actually I think that this view of women in church is changing in today's age because female pastors are being more in the forefront I know back in my hometown in Greenville I attend a mega church where the pastor is a female and most of her congregation is mostly female she also she even holds like women's seminars where women can have a space to come and not have to be under the leadership of men she holds those every month so I feel like in today's society that is something that's changing in religious settings that women are coming out more and are being leaders of the church um, it's also in, in, interesting to me how Alana Clay described her take on the term bitch um, she says to be treated like a bitch is to be treated as an expendable non-person and sex object to be perceived as a bitch is to be feared or reviled because you are assertive or because you dare to withdraw your consent to being oppressed to be called a bitch is an oppressor's attempt to claim the power to name and dominate someone else I found this interesting because in the past I've used the word bitch as a form of empowerment such as with my girlfriend saying stuff like you're a bad bitch or damn bitch you look good but to read her perspective on it really shows my ignorance in the past of the word I know that with this generation and younger generations the term bitch is used by others who think that they are being positive or empowering other women even feminists like Amber Rose and Beyonce use the terms with Beyonce referring to herself as a bad bitch in Jay-Z's song Tom Ford and even he as her husband uses it to describe her um it was just real interesting to me it, it really opens me up to how I'm using the word or how the word is being used by me and if I should even accept that word being used by me and my peers or if I should even accept that word being used towards me like if that word is ever used towards me again I feel like I should step outside myself and just be like no like this is not right and this is why that's not right using Alana's Clay example um, but in the end, I chose these two readings because of how they relate to the sexuality of black women and the issues we face with having to be perfect black women just to be accepted by black men in society, which both aren't perfect themselves. Um, these readings help me understand feminism more on how certain terms that I might see as being positive really aren't. And I should start digging more under the surface for a better understanding on how to navigate through today's society with a feminist lens. Um, I find I was miseducated in the past while calling myself a feminist in which I was not practicing feminism in the right way. Um, instead, I would come off more as I hate men because of this, this, and this, when really feminism is more than just how men treat us, but it's how we view ourselves and um, the values we uphold of being true to ourselves. The only challenges I experienced during this assignment in creating the vlog was producing the actual video because I've never done a vlog before. And I've never done video editing, just photo editing. Also trying not to ramble or lose my point of view while doing this was also hard because I am very good at jumping from subject to subject. But that's just me being very um, passionate about what I'm talking about. And I don't know, it's just like just doing this vlog really made me want to dig deeper into feminist research beyond my opinions I already have. And thank you for watching this and I hope you enjoy.